Hello everybody and thanks for joining me. So uh, lately I've been getting a few emails regarding GIFs, using GIFs in Corral Motion Studio or Corral Video Studio. And uh, just in the recently I've got this guy Gumshoe, Grips please, I need your help, I'm using GIFs. Uh, Tom2, I've got, he wants to use GIFs in backgrounds in Corral Motion Studio. So uh, yeah, you certainly can and I'm going to show you my little way of doing it. So. All right, so this is not really a Photoshop tutorial per se because I'm hoping that you already know how to make a GIF. Uh, there's many, many ways to make a GIF. I just use Photoshop, the animation tool over here. Um, if you ever really want me to make a tutorial on, making, on using GIFs or making GIFs, just put the comment in below and I'll uh, do that for you. But anyway, uh, so after you've created your GIF and saved it as a GIF format, then you can use it in Corel. Why would you use it in Corral? Well, very simple. Uh, I'm going to use uh, the templates as an example. So I've got a template that I just chose randomly. And if you, if I play it, I'm going to pull the scrubber because why press play, you know, too much work. Now, if I'm using my scrubber as it goes along the timeline, these stills are just that. They're just stills. So if I was to say, use this and replace it with a photo, so I'm just going to put in a photo drag, control, and release. Essentially all I've done is put in a still image. So as it goes along, it's now, wow, that's nice, there's a still image there. And then I would have to do that for all six. So basically you would see six individual pictures as the timeline goes along and then it fades back out. Now wouldn't it be greater if these pictures, they themselves, also moved now that would be cool right so let's try that so i'm going to use the gif and this is why you can use gifs in corral so let's grab uh the same thing all right i'm going to drag it in hold down my control and release so now i've actually got a gif in here so it's now going through pictures so it's no longer just a still image is actually uh still images of quite a few so as you can see, it's definitely going along. So wouldn't it be great if you had now six doing that? So you can have little photos flashing. Now these photos I just pulled off the internet. There's something about camping. There you go. And that's basically it. So how do I do this? Now obviously creating a GIF is not that difficult. Now there is a small little trick that I do need to tell you. You need to make your GIF the exact same length as the template. The best way to find out is what your template is. Just highlight your template itself, move your cursor all the way to the end, and just hold down your mouse key. And then it gives you the time. It says 5 seconds and 20 frames. So your GIF sequence must be at least 5 seconds and 20, seconds long, 20 frames long. So you'd be better off just making a 6 second uh, sequence. So if I go back in here, you'll see that I have created the frames one second duration each. So if I press play, you'll see it'll cycle through per second. Okay, and then it just goes back. Now you don't need to have your GIF repeating because if you're using it in a timeline as in Corral, it will only go through it once anyway. It's not that the video is going to repeat itself, so there's no point. But whether you save it as a, a, a recurring sequence or a one-time sequence, it's irrelevant because Corral would just ignore the fact that it is a recycling. So you've got to make sure that if the sequence or the, let's go back, that this template is uh, roughly six seconds long, you must make sure that your sequence is also six seconds long. If you don't, you will not be able to insert it. A little message will come up saying that your sequence is too short and therefore you can't do it. And that, my friends, is how you can incorporate GIF animation. Whee! Rather loud, wasn't it? And that's how you can do it. So it's very simple. And as always, thanks for watching.